What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to World of Wargaming. Today, we're going to build a necromancer and our starting horde of undead minions for Death Wizards from Snarling Badger Studios. To do that, we need the book, we need the sheets, which are available on the website. I wasn't sure how many to print, so I printed one for the necromancer, and then I printed three of the minion sheets. I think you can have up to 15 minions. And then one sheet for the powers. I figured that would be enough to last me a good little while. If I need another one of those later, I can print it. Next up, we choose one of these stat lines, and then we get to increase two different stats by plus one. So you can't do the same stat twice. And they range. I'm, I'm probably going to go with this middle one because it has a much stronger line, but it has less necromantic energy. Whereas... These two have stat lines which are not as good, but have more energy. And we fill those in accordingly. I actually opted to go with the top stat line and then increase my movement and my offense by one. Next, we come to choosing our necromantic legacy, of which there are six. The first is the Dread Horde Master, which is exactly what you would think. It is centered around big groups of piddly minions. Next is the War Reaper, which is centered around controlling your minions, but also unleashing devastating melee attacks on your enemies. We then have the Controller, who is kind of different because he's focused around stealing undead minions from other Necromancers. So probably not the best one if you're going to be doing solo or co-op play, but in a skirmish setting, could be a lot of fun. Next we have the Monster Master, who's kind of the opposite of the Dread Horde Master. Instead of focusing on lots of piddly minions, they focus on the high-end minions. So they only recruit ranks, ratings of threes and fours that aren't spirits. They gotta be physical beings. And then they have special abilities like increased stats and things of that sort. Unlike normal necromancy, necromantic minions where the minions never improve, whenever the Monster Master improves his stats, one of their minions also gets to improve their stats. The Spirit Caller is next and kind of continues that theme of being a very specialized necromancer by only being able to recruit spirits who all get an extra plus one to their movement stat. Next we come to the Stitcher who instead of viewing his his things as his creations as, or his minions as works of art or just mindless drivel chattel he kind of views them as pets so his ability is that he gets to heal up his minions when he activates during the course of the game because they're his buddies he wants them to stick around as i've mentioned before i'm going to play the dread horde master so my max number of undead that i can bring to a fight is plus four i cannot have undead with a rating of two or greater than two and if my minions are attacking something and there are other minions within range of it, they get plus one to their offense. The next step is to choose our minions. So there are still a fair number of things that I can choose from, even with it being just two or less. But we're not going to be seeing any of these big boys. When choosing, you get to start with seven rating worth of undead. With my starting seven points of minions, I choose a white, two zombies, a skeleton, a skeleton archer, and a vampire spawn. There. And then you can add, you'll add more minions to your horde as the game progresses. Now, ideally, you you would normally want to write everything in here. However, I have the cards, which have all the stats for the the horde and stuff. So I'm I'm my I'm not a, a, a monster master, so mine aren't going to get any better. They're going to stay just as they are. Well, they they might get worse though. So as it turns out, with powers. One power sheet is the exact amount that you need to start the game, but I think you'll pretty rapidly get to the point where you need more. So you start with one power from your legacy, which mine is Corpse Bomb, so I can blow up my minions. You then get access to three universals, which are Dark Shield, Negative Bolt, and Restore Energy. Dark Shield lets you kind of negate some damage. Negative Bolt is a ranged spell that you have attack spell and restore energy allows you to 
remove models to gain necromantic energy. Then you get to pick three. I chose to pick more support type powers because I want the, the horde to be the main focus. So I took Bolster Undead, which lets me boost offense and defense. Dark Flame Weapons, which lets me boost offense and critical damage. And Stitch Together, which allows me to heal some durability on my minions to keep them trucking along. Next, we're going to choose our lair. I'm going to go with the cave because it has the highest undead rating. And as a horde master, I need room for my, my dudes. So we're going to record these stats on our layer sheet. We record that information here. So I have the Mockingbird's Nest, which is a cave. My max undead is 28. My max impedimentia, which are your upgrades, is 10. My starting defense is 2. And then each layer has a special ability. For the cave, it's minus 1 to the roll to determine if you're going to have a layer assault. At that point, we have all of our pages together. I do have one or two models that I need to paint, but other than that, we're ready to jump into some Death Wizards. Thanks so much for tuning in and hanging out while we put a horde together. Hope you found it helpful or maybe entertaining or hopefully both. And more importantly, I'm glad you're here and I hope you have an absolutely amazing rest of your day.